Hi, I'm David Bott from OutsiderBubble.com and today we're going to teach you how to bring a Parks Wi-Fi signal from outside to inside to your own private wireless network. And this can be used in any park you go to and we're going to teach you how. But first, there's a few things you need to know. One, we're going to do it inexpensively, under $100, so that's great news. But you do need some computer knowledge to set it up. So, first and foremost, the most important thing you need to know is how to change your internal network card from DHCP to static and then back to DHCP again. Now, notice I said internal network card. I didn't say Wi-Fi. Your computer must have a network port on it to use a network cable because we need that to configure the radio. So if you understand how to bring it from your network card from DHCP to static and back, then great. You got most of the problems solved already. But if you don't, you're going to have to learn that. Now be aware that I'm on a MacBook Pro. So if you're following along and you have a Mac product, you should be able to follow along just fine and without having to do anything else and have any previous knowledge. Also, you're going to need two devices to do this with. Now what I mean by that is you're going to have to have one computer to do the configuration on and another computer to stream this video on or download the video to your computer to play it back if you only have one computer or take really good notes. <laughs> because we're going to be turning off your Wi-Fi on the computer you're using to configure the radios because we can't have an IP conflict when we're doing this. So that's really important. And last but not least, even though we're going to be connecting you to the park's Wi-Fi system with a better connection over a high-powered radio, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have good internet service. The reason for this is because it's completely dependent on the amount of data coming into the park and the number of people on the current Wi-Fi system that's using bandwidth. So if you understand all of this, most importantly how to change your network card from static to DHCP and DHCP to static and what have you, then we're good to go. So we're going to head on over to the desktop here, and I'm going to share that with you as we walk you through the process of setting up a NanoStation M2 and an Air Gateway from Ubiquiti. Hi everybody, David Bott here from OutsideOurBubble.com. Today we're going to talk about Wi-Fi in your motor coach, and it doesn't have to be expensive. Now what I mean by that is there's a lot of products out there you can buy that um, you know help you pull in the park Wi-Fi signal to bring it inside your coach and then create a network, a wireless network, inside your coach which all your devices connect to. Now you might not believe me, but you can do this for as little as $70. Not kidding. I'm going to show you how to set up the radios and the gateway in order to do it. So the products you're going to need for that is a NanoStation Loco M2. This is a Ubiquiti product. You can buy this off of Amazon. All the links are provided below. NanoStation Loco N2. That's your radio and your antenna um, that you're going to be using to connect to the park. You're also going to buy a Air Gateway. An Air Gateway is another Ubiquiti product that is basically going to be your wireless router. This is what all your devices are going to connect to, believe it or not. So what you're going to end up with is one very small package that you just plug into the wall and then go to a website or an IP address, connect to the park's Wi-Fi, and off, and off you're running. So in any case, the other part, part that comes with the nano station is a power injector. This is basically a transformer with a PoE, power over Ethernet, um, port on it that sends power to the nano station and you will also need two network cables. Now this can only be set up, the radio portion of it can only be set up if you're using a notebook computer that has a network port. If it doesn't have a hardwired network port you can't set it up. So just heads up on that. And the second thing you might want to do before you get too far into this video is you may not be able to play this back and do the work at the same time on the same computer. So you might want to use a tablet or um, another notebook computer that's connected to the internet to stream this or you might want to somehow download this file and play it back on the computer you're setting it up on so you don't have to be re be required to have the internet connection to stream the video. In any case, that's up to you how to decide you want to do that. The other thing you've got to remember um, is the computer you're working on, please turn off the Wi-Fi at this time. 
turn off the Wi-Fi. That is because we don't want to have any conflicts between IP addresses while we're setting it up. So turn off your Wi-Fi on the computer you're using for setup at this time. Go ahead, I'll wait. Actually, I won't wait. I'm from New York, I talk fast. So, any case, let's begin, shall we? Grab your NanoStation Loco M2. On the back, you're going to push the button down and you're going to remove the front cover. Set that aside for now. You're going to take one of your network cables and you're going to plug it into the LAN port. It's the only port on the bottom of it, so you really can't mess this up. Okay? From there, you're going to take the end of that and you're going to grab the PoE power injector. You're going to plug this cable into the PoE port, power over Ethernet. That's going to send power to the radio. Speaking of power, the power cord that came with the uh, power injector, plug that into the power injector block, and then plug that into your outlet. Excuse me. Okay, now since I've done that, the radio is starting to power up. You can see the light. So at this point, you can just set that aside. And now you're going to take your other network cable, plug that into the LAN port, LAN port of the power injector. So now you have two cables plugged into that. And then plug the other end into the notebook computer that you're using to configure it. So now we're going to get to the computer part and the programming part. Remember, your Wi-Fi should be off at this point. You're also going to need to know how to set up a static IP address on your computer. I'm using a Mac, so I can only show it how it's done on a Mac. If you use a Windows machine, if you don't know how to set a static IP for your network card in your computer, then you're going to have to learn that first. Sorry, don't know, uh, don't know really how to set it because there's too many different versions, if you will, of Windows. So in any case, in my particular case, I'm going to be going into my system preferences. There's the screen. Ta-da! Um, and then we're going to do network. Again, this is on a Mac. And then I'm going to make sure I have Ethernet selected because I'm using an Ethernet cable and an Ethernet port. And then I'm going to change using DHCP, which is usually the default for Windows or Macs machines. We're going to change that to manually, or in Windows it's going to be statically, static set. And you're going to put the IP address in of 192.168.1.10. You're going to put the subnet mask at 255, 255, 255, 0. Now, um, notice I'm saying 255, 255. There's a period between each one of those. I apologize. So um, 192.168.1.10 and 255.255.255.0. You're going to leave everything else blank the way it is, and you're going to hit Apply. At this point, um, you now have aesthetically assigned this IP address to your network card. And now you're going to go to your web browser. Now be aware when you open up your web browser and the first time we go into, um, if you have a page set up that it automatically goes to, if you're not connected to the internet, which we're not, it's going to give you an error on that page that it can't reach the page. Obviously, it can't reach it. We're not connected. So now up in your web browser tab, you're going to put the IP address of the radio. The radio comes defaulted, and by the way, when I say radio, I also mean nano station. Um, it's all in one, and I, I interchange the two words. I do apologize. So you're going to go to your radio, and the, the default IP address is 192.168.1.20. Press enter. Now, when you do this, it's going to connect to the radio. If your browser gives you an error or a warning saying that this is an unsecure site or some type of warning where you don't get this page right here, that's because it's an HTTPS site, a secure site. What you have to do is, however you need to tell your browser it's okay, go ahead and continue, that's what you have to do. And then you'll get to this page. Now remember, it's not really unsecure because you're not on the internet at this point, you're just talking to your radio. It just means it doesn't have the correct credentials, and it gives your browser, a, you know, a little scare. So, um, however you have to get to this page, please do so. So once you're here, then the default username and password for every Ubiquity product is UBNT. So the username is UBNT. The password is UBNT. Go ahead and select your country. And then down here, click, check the box to agree to the terms of service then click login. 
At this point, you're going to be logging into the interface of the radio itself. And this is where we make our configuration changes. Up in the Network tab, you'll see Network. Click on Network. From the Network tab, you're going to come down to Network Mode. Select Router. Then come down to NAT, N-A-T, and put a check mark in Enable. Then come down to the bottom where it says IP Address. Change the IP, IP address to read 192.168.2.1. 192.168.2.1. Underneath DHCP server, click on Enabled. Underneath Start Range Start, make 192.168.2.2 and 192.168.2.254. For the end range. Once again, start range is 192.168.2.2, end range is 192.168.2.254. Go ahead at the bottom. Oh, you're going to run, you might run into this little orange window here. Just go ahead and dismiss that. It's asking you to, to reminding you actually to change your admin password. We'll do that in a second. Go ahead and click change at the bottom. Up at the top, you're going to see a system tab. Click on system. At this point, we're going to go ahead and change the, the password for the radio. We're going to keep the username the same as UBNT. Okay? So right down here, you'll see UBNT and you'll see a little key next to it. Click on the key, enter in the current password, which is the default, UBNT, and then the new password, whatever you want it to be. Now, this is your password, so I'm just going to use a temporary password just to show this being set up. But right now, at this point, it would be a good idea for you to put in whatever you want your password to be. Okay? So put in your password. Don't put in what I do because mine's just going to be a default test. Okay? That's what I put in was test. Go ahead and verify the same password again in the other box, and then click on Change. Once the page refreshes, you're going to click on Apply. At this point right now, your Nano Station M2 is rebooting. So what we need to do now is it's going to hand out an IP address in the 2.x subrange somewhere to your network card. So now we need to go tell the network card to go back to DHCP. So we're going to, I'm going to go back to my system preferences and network, and I'm going to change my, my Ethernet adapter from manually to using DHCP. If it's a Windows machine, you're going to change it from static to DHCP. And then you're going to hit apply or save, or whatever your machine tells you to do. At that point, we should get a new IP address with a 2.x subrange. So 192.168.2.136 it gave me. And I can see that I'm connected to the radio because my router is 192.168.2.1. So that is, um, that I know we're talking to the radio, we got an IP address, and everything looks good at this point. So now we can go back over um, to, to the system. And up here, you're going to put in, you're going to change the address in your web browser to be 192.168.2.1, the IP address of the radio. Now, this is going to be important to remember. 2.1 is important because that's the IP address you're going to have to go to whenever you go to a new RV park because you have to go there first to be able to connect to the radio in the RV park, which is what we're going to do right now. So we go to 2.1. If you get a warning page, please get past that. Um, and then UBNT and the new password, which you might have put in. I have put in test. And then log in. Now we're going to connect to the park's Wi-Fi system. You're going to click on wireless. You're going to click on select. Here, it's going to show you all the SSIDs it can see in the air. The first and easiest thing to do is click on Signal two times. And what that's going to do is going to sort the radios, the SSIDs, in, in order of the most powerful to the least powerful. The lower the number, negative 45, is better than negative 79, just to give you an idea. So you want it to be closest to zero as possible. Now, in this park, we're at, we're at Eagle View RV Park, so their SSID is Eagle View Guest. So I'm going to look down the list, find Eagle View Guest, which is right here. 
I'm going to click on the radio button to, to check box there to select that access point. I know it's the strongest one because it's, I sorted the list already. And then I'm going to slide down and I'm going to click lock to AP. That's going to lock the, IP, the MAC address of that radio into the system so it can't hop to another radio that might have the same SSID. Because if it hops, the chances are you can get dropped, your, your connection can drop intermittently, and you don't want that to happen. So it locked onto that radio. Now we're just going to hit change, and then we're going to hit apply. Now at that point, what's going to happen is your radio is once again going to reboot, and the lights on the back right here, these lights, that's a signal meter. Those will light up like a Christmas tree when it has locked on to the access point. So we'll wait for that. And we're waiting for it to lock out of the access point. It should do that. It really should. Come on. Oh, there it is. So it took a second, but you can see the lights came on. So now we know we're locked onto the access point. We have a good connection to their network. We know it's handing out a DHCP IP address to our computer. So now the next step is to set up the air gateway. This device. So we're going to move on to the air gateway setup now because we know that the internet is currently connected. How do we know that? You can open up another tab and then click on your web page you want to go to and look. Your web page should come up and it does. So we know we're talking to the park and we know we're getting an IP address and everything is working so far. Now it's time to make it wireless so all your devices can use it. Okay, so now after a little break I took here, it's time to connect the air gateway. This is another ubiquity device that is basically your router. All your devices in your coach, all your wireless devices, will connect to this. So be it your television, your iPad, your notebook, your tablet, whatever, this is going to be connecting it, we're going to be connecting to this with your own SSID, so your own internal network, even your printer, if it's wireless. Any case, so as you can see, we got on the internet, so we know everything is working with the radio setup connected to the access point of the um, of the RV park, so all that testing is done. That's configured properly, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to disconnect the two network cables from the PoE injector. Disconnect the network cable from your notebook. Won't need that again. And then we're going to take the air gateway and we're going to plug that into the PoE port on the, on the injector. It's really easy if you just give it a little bit of an angle and then pull and then push it in place and pull down. It should snap right in. Okay, so now it's got power and it's running. Take the network cable from your nano station and plug that into the PoE port of, of the device, of the connections here. PoE. So that gives power back and connectivity back to the nano station. So now, since we disconnected all the wires from the notebook, it's time to go wireless. First thing you're going to do is turn your wireless back on. And you're going to look for www the SSID of www.ubnt.com. Not the website, but the SSID. I know it's a little confusing. So look for it in here. This is my list. Your list will be different depending on the operating system. So I'm just waiting to see it here. There it is. I'm going to click on that. There is no password. It's going to, it's going to connect right up. And now I'm going to go to 192.168.1.1. Again, 192.168.1.1 in your web browser. You'll get this screen, or you're going to get a warning screen. Um, just get past that or whatever to get to this screen. The default username and password for, for Ubiquity devices, again, is UBNT, UBNT. Select your country, and check the box that you agree to the terms, and then log in. Now it's real simple. It's going to ask you two things. It's going to ask you for a new password, and it's going to ask you for uh, to set up an SSID of your own. Ignore this part about not been detected. That's for future use. And right here, you're going to. This is where you're going to give a, a password for your device. Now remember, on the Nano Station, I had used Test. Whatever you used on the Nano Station, I recommend you use also on the Air Gateway in case you ever have to get back into it at the 192.168.1.1 address this is where you would use UBNT and whatever password you're setting. In my case, I had used test on the radio, so I'm going to use test here. And then click next. Now right here, this is, this is where you get to name your own internal Wi-Fi network. You can name it whatever you want. It could be your coach's name, your wife's name, your dog's name, anything. So 
I'm going to use testnet. You can use whatever you want. And then you're going to give your SSID, your wireless SSID, a password. It has to be eight characters or more. So keeping in my theme, I'm going to use test, test. This you want it to be something different um, than your other two devices that you named the same because you need at least eight characters. If you used eight characters on the other one, you can feel free to use the same one here. But remember, this is the password you will use to connect to testnet or whatever you named it. Just hit next and then click finish. What's going to happen now is going to reboot the air router, the air gateway, excuse me. And if you go back up to my Wi-Fi settings, my Wi-Fi devices, you'll see I'm still connected because it hasn't rebooted yet. And then once it reboots, it's going to disconnect me and then testnet will show up. And then I'm going to connect to testnet. So I'm just waiting for it to do that now at this point. Now I'm saying testnet because that's what I called it. Whatever you called it, it's going to show up in your list. I'm just waiting for it because the Mac is a little slow on doing that sometimes. But we should see it probably on the next pass. There it is, testnet. So I just clicked on testnet. It's asking me for the password. In my case, test test. In your case, whatever you decided to give the password. And I'm going to join that network. Well, I'm on the network. It could be my phone. It could be a tablet. Anything connected to my internal Wi-Fi network securely, encrypted, is now connected, which is then in turn connected to the RV park. So, once again, I should have internet access. Wirelessly. Great. So now what happens when you want to go to another RV park or say the RV park that you're in has bad Wi-Fi and you want to use your own MiFi device? Well, that's simple also because remember how we selected the access point in the first time when we were setting up the antenna? That's what we're going to do again. But all we're going to have to do is select the access point or the MiFi device or whatever you want to use. So open up your web browser, type in 192.168.2.1 which is the IP address of your nano station. Remember, that's going to be the most important IP address you have because that's the one you're going to have to go to to change what it's connecting to when you move RV parks or if you want to use your own, your own data supply like the MiFi or Hotspot. So go ahead and go to that. This is the username, UBNT, and the password that you gave the radio before. In my case, it was test. I'm going to log in. And now I'm going to jump up to wireless and it's going to show you the last one that you used. Here's the Eagle View that I had used. I'm going to click on Select and say Eagle View is very poor Wi-Fi. I'm going to use my data hotspot. My hotspot is called DataBot. So I look through the list. There's DataBot. I select that one. I scroll down, lock to AP, and DataBot requires a password. If it doesn't require a password, this will not be there. If it does, this shows up. So I'm typing in my password for my hotspot, or if the park had given you a Wi-Fi access point password, this is where you would type it in. Hit change, and then hit apply. Now what's happening is the nano station is rebooting. As you can see, the lights went out except for the power light, and the network light will come on and start to flash. And then when it connects to the access point you just told it to, the lights will light back up again. Now remember, when you're in an RV park, you can point this antenna toward the access point for the best reception. That's what you're going to want to do. This is the front of the device. Okay, Point that to where you want it to be. As you can see, we did successfully connect to DataBot. And you can tell that by going into the main here, and you can see the signal. Right there is the signal here. And so you know you've got a good connection. So at this point, once again, you should be able to surf the internet. There it is. Everything's working well. Well, I really hope this worked out for you, and I hope this uh, really got you doing what you needed to do. It's, it's an easy way to set it up, and, and now that it is set up, you really don't have to do anything. You just keep, keep this all plugged in, and you just connect to your own internal network. Even if you don't have internet access currently, because you're not, you didn't connect this to anything using Select, you can still print to your printer and everything wirelessly. So, hope it all works out. Inexpensive, cheap. Just a little setup time, and you can just do it from now on. I'm David Bob from Outside Our Bubble. You take care and keep safe. We'll see you on the road. Bye now.